Well, it's August 23rd and these apples are starting to fall on their own. So I'm gonna pick them all today and put them in the house for a couple weeks before processing them. Let them get even riper. They're already really ripe, really nice uh, apples. I figure between these two trees, there's about 500 of them here. 200 pounds of apples. So I'll do uh, two six gallon jugs of, of cider, plus lots of extras to eat. Well, here's uh, bucket number two, plus that. Barely made a dent, so uh, keep at it. All right, I'm gonna stop here for today. Uh, I got a lot of apples and I took all the ones that are anywhere up at all high on the trees because that's where the, one, the birds get to them, and two, uh, if they fall, they get damaged. But the ones down the bottom, they just drop you know, a foot or a few inches into the grass. So I'll be picking those up as we go, as I've been doing. And uh, that way they can get a little riper on the tree. Plus I don't really have anywhere to put them right now, so I'll be getting some more boxes ready. So here we have them, a lot of really nice apples. These are ones I've been picking over the last few weeks, putting in the fridge. So here we have quite a bit of crab apples to choose from. The city of Beijing plants these in a lot of places in the parks and here along the street. Pretty convenient because just uh, right here on the other side of that canal, you see there, and then right on the other side of that, that's where I live. So short walk, 10 minutes, and uh, here they are crab apples. So I need about four kilos, about 10 pounds of these. I'll start picking. All right, got two bags like this. I think that's enough. Let's head on back home. I've got this third apple tree in the yard, a small one. It's got these tart little green apples on it that uh, I'm going to kind of use them as crab apples, even though uh, I don't think they they're really crab apples, but uh, they should be good. I'm gonna let them ripen some more. Here are the crab apples I picked, also ripening. And our apples are getting ripe too, so I'll probably pick them in the next week or two, let them ripen indoors like this for a bit, and then we'll be ready to make cider. I've picked all the apples now, and here's what we've got, quite a lot of them. And the crab apples. So I've got my apple press all set up here and the first thing I want to do is measure how much juice do I have from all these two crab apples and more than 10% in total to give it some extra flavor and tannin not make it too bitter. So I'm gonna grind these up first get a measurement set it aside and then we will proceed with the apples. Juice coming out. Looks fine. There we go. Now let's see how much. Red apple juice to be in It's about 1.2 liters. So uh, definitely, definitely less than 10% uh, considering that one of those is uh, 25 liters. Let's see what this stuff tastes like. No, oh, it's not bad at all. I thought it was going to be really bitter, but it's a little bit sweet. Throw these in here. Don't drink 
like any went bad. They just look bad because they froze. one liter there. So one liter. Two. Pretty much on the nose. Two liters uh, two beaters. Two liters exactly. Sour but sweet. Decent. Make a little add something to our juice. That's what we did. Let's see what we Next we'll deal with all these ones that started to go bad. Wash them. We'll wash them and cut them up. all the apples that had blemishes on them. Now I'm cutting up all the thin ones, all the pieces. Go through the grinder. Better this way. Apples that went through the press once. Still have quite a bit of juice, so I'm going to run them all one more time through the grinder and the press and see what kind of juice we get out a second time around. I have a feeling I'm going to get a reasonable, reasonable amount out. If so, I'll do that with the rest of it too. If not, I won't bother. It's kind of a lot of extra work. Alright, second press and let's see what we got out of this. much juice. Time 
hate to waste the juice, so I might as well go the extra step. <clears throat> Get this out too. Well, it is five o'clock. I think I started at like 10. So this has really been an all day, all day deal. Back breaking work and my, my grinder like could put on me fell apart so uh, what I've been doing is running all these apples through my juicer and then putting the juice the foam the, the pulp from within the juicer all of it into the press and running it and then I end up getting nice nice juice without all that foam and end up getting uh, all the extra juice out of the pulp and whatnot it's working well it's just it's a lot of work going at it for seven hours. But the uh, 25 liter vessel is getting close to the top. I think I'll be able to do two that size, but maybe 25 and a 10 liter one. Okay, the 25 liter jug is full. Let's do this one next. I ended up getting this 25 liter, this 10 liter, and another, say, two and a half liters of juice. I got more apples, but I don't have any more daylight. So I think I'm gonna call it a day, and we'll finish up in here in the kitchen. This will drink as fresh apple cider, it's really nice. This, I'm gonna do just traditional hard apple cider, and this one I'm going to add a few things and make it like a, a mulled cider, try something new. So, let's uh, let's start adding. So we don't really have to add much. This is pec pectinase, pectic enzyme, and it's, uh, it's nice because it helps to break down the, the solid parts of the fruit that are still in the juice uh, and clear it up quicker. So, let's do two in here. Two, and six in this one. And the next thing I'm going to add are Campton tablets. This will kill off any bacteria or wild yeast that's in here now. Uh, it's basically sanitize it so it doesn't spoil. And then uh, it needs 24 hours for this to dissipate. Tomorrow night I'll add the yeast, otherwise it would kill it. You need one of these per gallon, so that's. Uh, there's six, that's the right number for this one, and there's solid, so let's take a couple of spoons and pulverize them into powder, like so. And let's get everything a good stir. Smells really, really nice. Tastes good too, I've tried it. So this one's done for today. Finally, seven o'clock. I started at 10 this morning. Had some problems with the grinder. Quite a few problems actually. The press worked nice. So we don't want to put that on tight because we want the the sulfites, the Campton tablets, uh, to dissolve and evaporate. So it's on there really loose. And I'm going to stick this under the stairs. All right, there's one more thing that I forgot to do, but uh, not too late. Do it now. Let's check the specific gravity. One point oh five oh. One point oh five oh, which gets us about five and a half percent alcohol. There it is. Yeah. One point one point zero five zero about five and a half percent alcohol when all that sugar um, gets converted to alcohol and CO2. 
The other thing I'm going to do is check the approximate pH. This litmus paper isn't really accurate. But I'd like to know what's the pH, more or less. And that's right in the right zone. It's uh, a little darker than four, so it's I don't know three point eight or something, which is which is great. It's perfect. And I've measured out five hundred grams of brown sugar. And we'll put two hundred and fifty milliliters of water in that and boil it. Two fifty. The ratio should be two parts sugar to one part water. And I put that on low for now, and while that's going, I'm going to measure out a few spices that I want to add to this. The first one is cinnamon. And let's put, oh, let's put four of these in there, so what's that come to? 50 grams. So it's 50 grams of cinnamon. I'll let them boil with the sugar just to release the flavor. And the other one's cloves. Let's do three, three grams of cloves here. Now I'm just gonna let that whole thing boil for a bit and release the flavor into, the, into that sugar water. And then I'm gonna put it into, into our apple juice. All right, let's boil for a while and uh, Cool. Time to put this in here. The spices stay in the juice for about a week or two. See how it takes for the primary fermentation. And I'll remove them when I put this into glass for secondary fermentation. Okay, and we added sugar, so let's see what the new specific gravity is. It's about 1.065. 1.065, and that's going to kick the alcohol content eight, eight and a half. This one is now also finished for today. So just. We put the lid on there, and that one too can go on the stairs. Be back tomorrow. This is what's left. Two boxes. I think I'll give those oh, a week or ten days or so until my primary fermentation vessels uh, are empty again. And then I'll do these. I'll probably be able to get one more of those ten liter vessels. Especially if I go pick some more crab apples. And over there is where I put all of the remains of the operation. And that's my compost barrel, 300 liter barrel. Mostly use it for rapid manure, but... Uh... Okay, it has been 24 hours. So all I need to do today is add the yeast. And I like to just do it this very simple way without a starter or anything like that. This is a full bag, Dibosh wine yeast works great. I just sprinkle it all over the surface like that. And this one, this here is just half a bag. Okay, and we just uh, close these in lightly because there's going to be a lot of CO2 gas. We don't want to trap that in there. We want to let it out. There. Put it back here under the stairs and uh, come back and check it every day. We'll come back in about a week or so and uh, move it over to glass. It has been two days since I put the yeast in here and now it is really bubbling away. It smells great too. 
So the fermentation is going perfectly. Check this one. Same thing, bubbling really good. It's been a week now since we've pressed our apples and uh, the primary fermentation has subsided. It bubbled really violently for the first few days and now it's slowed way down, which means most of the sugar has been converted to alcohol already, uh, the CO2. So let's take another reading on our sugar content. One point zero is the specific gravity of pure water. When you add sugar, it goes higher. Alcohol lower. The reason so, it's a little less than one now is because there's virtually no sugar left, but there is alcohol. There's actually still some sugar left, so we're going to move it into the secondary fermentation vessel, the glass, where it will finish the fermentation over the next few weeks. And then we now we sanitized our cider when we added the canter tablets and at that time by doing so it also sanitized everything in here and we didn't really need to worry about it sanitizing spoons for stirring any of that at the time because of the canter tablets but now uh, those have long since dissipated and we are going to be introducing the cider to new things that could contaminate it with bacteria which we absolutely don't want so we will be using this product called star sand uh, very concentrated stuff. You squeeze it and it fills up this little five milliliter top portion, which you then pour out into three liters of water. And I've got some of it in here. I've already completely rinsed out um, all of the glass jugs that we're going to be using. We use this to spray on everything. You don't need to rinse it off, which is, makes it very convenient to use. And it, totally sanitizes everything. So, uh, let's go ahead now and move this cider into our, our glass. It smells really good. Perfect. All right, didn't quite fill this. Let's go ahead and do the uh, second batch. Sanitize this again, and let's see what our sugar content is in the smaller one. This one's coming in at right at 1.0100. So both of them have fermented out, basically. Colander, of course, is two get all of the cloves and such out. Okay, then we're gonna do the same thing, fill these, these two glass jugs.
okay, these two are full, there's very little left, so uh, time to cap these. Okay, the key here is first sanitize. solution into the airlock. Now what this does is it lets the pressure from the CO2 bubble through, but nothing from the outside, no air, bacteria, fruit flies, none of that stuff can come back down in. So that So, here we go, back underneath the stairs, and this will sit for a few weeks, a few months. If it builds up too much sediment, I'll rack it off to clean ones, and then uh, we time to bottle them. That's it for today. Today is November 17th, and our cider has been in this vessel for just over two months. I think we put it in here September 12th. Um, I could leave it would like to leave it, but I'm going to need to use this for some other wine I made. So today we will go ahead and bottle it up. As you can see, it's gone completely clear. It looks really beautiful color. Um, and I'm going to be putting that, putting this in 750 milliliter plastic bottles. These originally were makgeolli. That's a Korean rice wine bottles, good quality. Uh, the reason I'm going to use these is because they have a good screw cap on them, airtight and I want to make this sparkling. I'm going to put some dextrose sugar in here to get this, uh, uh, turn this into sparkling cider. All right, so the first step is I'm going to use this ball washer. And it makes it quick work. You just uh, get it going and then uh, Sorts of that. And it sprays up all throughout the whole bottle, gets it nice and cleaned out. Star sand. This will disinfect it. Already very clean. Make sure there's no bacteria in my bottles. The rest of those. Okay, next I'm going to put one teaspoon of dextrose in each bottle. And this is uh, corn sugar. Uh, they say if you use this, you get, uh, you get uh, really small bubbles as opposed to if you use regular sugar. About 30, 31 bottles. If it was to here, I get 33, so less, you know, probably two bottles. So I'll go through and put a teaspoon of this dextrose in every bottle. Okay, I've done 30 bottles. Do another one or two if needed. Uh, again, each one has a teaspoon of dextrose, that's corn sugar. And the reason we do that is that. Oh, the yeast has already completely consumed all the sugar that was in our apple juice. So it's dry now, there's no sugar left. Uh, it should be around 5.5% alcohol because that sugar was converted into alcohol and into CO2, which has escaped out the airlock. Now, when we put more sugar in the bottles, add the juice, cap them, there's still live yeast in here, and that yeast is going to eat the sugar in the bottles, convert it into a little bit more alcohol and more CO2, and the CO2 won't be able to escape, so it'll be locked in the juice in the cider. And when we open it, the bubbles will come out. So that's the trick. Now, let's open up our cap. <clears throat> and this is our cider. Before
before I do, I'm going to want to, I'm going to, want to sanitize this with the star sand. So let's uh, run some star sand through this sucker. And, Push down on that thing. Push down, it releases it. Star sand can run down through the bottom of that. So the internal part of this thing is now completely sanitized. Star sand on the outsides of these things. So I'm going to have to do this with my mouth and then connect this again. Try not to get. enough in there to get the siphon going. It's not great, but it should be enough. Give it a try anyway. So I stick this rod down into the bottle like this and push. pressure up. We got a siphon going. And I can say in doing this I got a good taste of it and it's, it tastes really nice. I'll let it go to the very top and then when I when I take the tube out you end up with just enough air from what the tube displaced. It's a really nice little tool this bottle filler. Here goes, up, 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 all the way to the top and stop. I'll pull this out and the level comes right down to where we want it. Just a little bit of cap these up nice and tight. Case of 20. I ended up with a case of 20. And there's 10 more here, so that's 30 and a half. This will be our taster. So 30 bottles, we'll let those sit for a couple weeks, and then it's Thanksgiving, and we can start drinking them then. Uh, certainly by then, this, uh, this dextrose should all be converted and nice and fizzy. Well, it is August 2021. It's been a year now since I made this cider, and look at it. it's time to pick more apples, do this again. Now I waited a whole year to finish this video because I wanted to do the official one year taste test. So let's go inside and try the ciders that I made last year. Okay, it has been a whole year since we made this cider and I drank most of it and saved just these last few bottles to give it the one year taste test. So that's what we're gonna do today. And so this one, this is that first one we made, the big batch. And you know, as you can see, I labeled it. This was 91% uh, yellow apple juice, 5% crab apple juice, and 4% of those, those little green apples. And then this is that mold cider one that we did, which was uh, 90 percent yellow 10 percent green apples and we put some some spices in there and some brown sugar this one wasn't in the video i made this after the video and uh, it's a blend so later on i made some some uh, white wine from from white grapes from the garden and also some pomegranate wine also from the garden 
and had some leftover juice so that the next time I made with the remainder of our apples, uh, apple cider, I added that in there. So what we ended up with here is 59% uh, juice from the yellow apples, 9% from crab apples, 24% from muscat white grapes, and 8% pomegranate juice. So this one's a, a blended cider. And I got these nice Grolsch style bottles for that. So let's start. Okay, I can tell just from squeezing this that it has lost its fizz. So these bottles didn't work for the long term. Before, they were nice and fizzy, but I can tell this one is not. But yeah, there's no fizz left in here. That's a shame. It was, it was nice when it was fizzy. So that's a really nice flavor. Well, I gotta say, for, for all three of these, I started drinking them pretty early after bottling them. And at first I was disappointed. I thought they, they weren't very good. But the longer I waited, the more I let these age, the better they got. And after about six months, they were really good. This one was better at six months than it is now simply because it had fizz, but the flavor is still really nice. Well, let's try this one. This is that mold cider. Now this one never did get fizzy and I'm guessing it's because these bottles didn't, they, they weren't airtight. That's my guess. I don't know why it should have been fizzy. And yeah, it looks like still no fizz at all in that one. All right. Okay. So here's the, the mold cider, no fizz. The clove flavor in here is pretty strong. Can't taste the cinnamon. The clove is pretty overpowering. Even though I didn't, I put a lot more cinnamon than clove. Obviously, the clove is a much stronger spice. But I like it. It is good. Just a little too clovey. All right. Now for this blend. This one was really fizzy. And the Grolsch bottle kept it fizzy. Yeah, yeah it still has some nice bubbles in it, although it looks like less than it used to. Hmm. Yeah, the fizz makes a nice difference. This one, this one's excellent. Of the three, it's my favorite. Um, although if they still had the fizz, they, they would have been much better. But yeah, this is great. This blend is really good. Now, I didn't add any sugar or anything to this one, or this one, as you recall. I did add some brown sugar to that one, which is why it's darker. This is just straight juice, just a blend. Apple, crab apple, white grape, and pomegranate. Mostly apple juice. Great. So, I learned a few things. Uh, you definitely want to wait six months before you drink this stuff. After then, it's really good. In, depending on the bottles, if you go too much longer, now it's been a year, you, you'll lose some fizz. So... I'd say six months, eight months, that's ideal. Another thing I learned, it's a lot easier to press this, the apples. I just did it, I just made the, the batch for this year. If you freeze them first, so wash them up, cut them, put them in bags, froze them, then they really, really press easily. You don't have to do it twice either. So that's a, a tip. If you've got the freezer space, definitely freeze them first. And then when you take them out, put them in a big, big bucket or some bin because most of the juice just comes right out when they thaw. Put that right into your, vessel and then press what's left one time it all it gets all the juice out much 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 easier so that's it give it a try enjoy